Well, um, thank you very much, Yuri, for the introductions. Thank you to our hosts, uh, SlideShare Conference, for hosting us. As uh, mentioned, we'll be discussing about how advanced technologies might be changing and how this might be changing uh, any business model, so whether there could be a chance for changing the business model. So, to begin with, um, I, was given, uh, I was given a couple of minutes so, so that I can present what uh, uh, we are doing in our firm so that you can get an understanding of uh, how we are linked to the technology element and then I'll introduce the guys and have a nice discussion about that. So um, I'm uh, one of the founders of Vesselbot. Uh, we are a company that digitizes the chartering process in a way that we are kind of becoming a hybrid model between a traditional um, broker, competitive broker, and one technology-based broker. So in essence, what we did is we gathered a lot of uh, dispersed data that are around the market, like ports, port particulars, port congestion, uh, vessel particulars, uh, geolocation of uh, all the dry bulk uh, uh, fleets, trading patterns in different ports, etc., etc. So we gather everything together and we enable the ship owner and the charter to provide us with certain information in order to optimize the selection between the two. So in the middle there is technology and on the side there are physical brokers assisting the whole process, enabling our users to conduct in a more easy way their business. So. I'll uh, now move to introducing my fellow panelists. A bit late for my presentation, but no worries. Um, so, uh, would you like to start introducing yourselves? Uh, we have Carlos Vigna from Intercash. We have uh, Greg from Eco Marine Power. Gerasimos from Intrasoft. John uh, from Exclusive Brokers, Christos from uh, Laros, and uh, Pantelis from Olympic Vision. Uh, the way that I would like to do the discussion is to kind of challenge a bit what we are doing today and introduce what could be done and see whether where we sit in that respect. So I'll begin with the more traditional kind of people in the, in the room having the, the chance uh, to hear their opinions, Pandelis and, uh, and John, of where we, you stand in regards to technology. First of all, tell us what you do and then uh, try to tell us a bit about how much you use technology, whether you use technology, advanced technologies rather, not just technology, and where do you see things uh, in that respect today in the shipping industry. Kostadinos, uh, thank you very much uh, for the nice introduction and for the uh, very interesting discussion of whether we can be replaced by bots, by computers, today or tomorrow, in the future, or sometime uh, during our short life in, in this earth. So um, it's a very uh, interesting topic that we have been asked many times, of course. Um, I have the privilege of being uh, a ship broker for more, more than 30 years. Um, so, late 80s was the first day that I started as a broker, so I've lived the 80s, I've lived the 90s, I've lived the 2Ks, and also the 2K10s, uh, which were uh, ending in one year. So I have one thing that I can say for sure, decades are not decades anymore. They travel fast. So we can say early 2Ks, early 2K10s, or late 2K10s, maybe decades have to be split in two or maybe even less than that, maybe in a quarter. Technology is rapidly advancing, things are changing, they're progressing. We see so many rapid advances in technology which make our life sometimes not easier. We're holding a mega machine in our pockets. This little mobile phone, a smart device, if, if I had it in 1989 when I started becoming a broker, I would have been a genius then and probably I would have been the richest person on earth but I would have been the only person having this. Now everybody has this machine, so that means that everybody has access to information. Everybody can blast everything to the open market. And at the end of the day, 
the receivers, which are our customers, they get bombarded by a flood of data. And that is the biggest problem of technology. We are talking about two different things. One is data and business, of course, which goes with it. And there's a quantitative part of business. There's too much. There's a lot of quantity. How do we qualify and quantize into qualitative data? And how do we come down to good business, bad business, or dodgy business? That's where you need the broker. That's where you need us, because we have the feeling of the market, and we have the ability to take out noise from too much data. There's a lot of discussion going on about big data, and it is big data. Too much of big data, I would say. So we have to have filters. We have to have intelligent people who know the business and who can immediately tell you, avoid this business, avoid this charter, avoid this seller, avoid this ship, because I know things that a computer maybe either doesn't know or cannot filter. This is a brief idea of how we feel it. Definitely, I'm speaking with two hats. One is as an individual broker, and the other one is also as a president of the Shipbrokers Association. So I have to protect our industry, although we're challenged by computers. Brief, brief, um, before Pardelis has a chance to, to talk about uh, what they are doing and how they are doing with uh, technology, let me, let me raise a question here. Um, you, you all know Goldman Sachs, right? Large investment bank, huge organization. They have around 36,000 employees. In the last, uh, currently, out of the 36,000 employees, 9,000 of employees are, can anyone guess? Data scientists, technology people, so a quarter of their head count is technology-oriented persons. And I'll uh, quote what the CEO of uh, Goldman Sachs mentioned. Our business is a business of information, pattern recognition, and historical context, which everything is important. Equity trading 10 years ago was, uh, we, for equity trading, we had around 500 persons. Today, we only have three. Okay, so Goldman Sachs, a very successful organization, making billions of money, has 9,000 technology data scientist persons as employees, 25% of their headcount, and only three traders. Three traders. So my dear friend John, where do you see the difference and why wouldn't shipping going towards that direction? What, are, what makes us so different from any other market? Data, data sensitive financial services market, historical data, market data, why not through AI, advanced technologies in general? You're raising a very important issue, which is artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence has brought a new dimension, definitely, on data processing. Because it's not just statistics that come out with whatever correlations, with whatever, um, let's say, interactions of data that you can read as leading or trailing indicators which can help us predict. Predict is a good word for brokers, of course. You know, we're all asked to predict. Definitely we cannot predict. We can see some signs. Artificial intelligence, really what it does, it self-corrects. So it gives the ability to the computer, of course, to become more accurate. But I think that something that cannot happen in a flash, and it takes time, definitely it is a sign of the times. It is what we see ahead. We have to open our ears and our eyes and, of course, not be blind and, and deaf and say, this is not going to affect our industry. Airline industry was affected, definitely, with the online, with the web. Taxi was affected by Uber. Airbnb was affected, definitely, uh, the hotel industry and, you know, the hospitality industry. So our industry should face challenges. Artificial intelligence for me is the future, yes, because that self-corrects and it can bring 
results in a more accurate way and in a way that can be more applicable to our daily business. So, back to, again, the more traditional world uh, in, and the perspective of a ship owner. Uh, Pandelis works for Olympic Vision, uh, Onassis Group, so I've, I know that they're, they are using quite a few technological tools in their operations, so I wanted to get a perspective from him whether you think these kind of tools, any, in any sense, either this is commercial or technical or purely monitoring, do you think they can add value to, to an organization? And if yes, why wouldn't you or why would you use these? Well, uh, in our company, the last two years, we are using technology mainly to control ships uh, at sea from shore um, in order to uh, maximize, um, uh, to minimize the cost, um, to get better data from the ship and in accurate time, in uh, live, uh, and to give the right orders uh, to the ship uh, for the management uh, of the fleet uh, at sea. Uh, we are not using um, tools, except of the traditional voyage estimators or uh, communication, um, uh, communication programs and applications. Uh, however, and you see in our, uh, in the commercial part of uh, shipping, there is always, um, um, I can say, um, a uh, hesitation to proceed in new technologies. And um, Mr. Prokopiu said uh, a couple of hours ago uh, that, uh, okay, technology can help us, uh, but the business finally will go on the traditional way. And I have a question. If this will happen in the future, I was watching my son <coughs> uh, on Sunday playing PlayStation. So. Um, he wanted to play, uh, I couldn't follow him, and he was searching somewhere in the world for an opponent, um, setting strategy, his team, everything, his asset. He found the opponent, and uh, he was playing with him, finally, a very good game. I saw the game, it was very interesting, it's very, Realistic. I don't know if you know FIFA uh, football. So uh, I had in mind that yes, okay. Now it's difficult. Maybe it's difficult for us to adopt such kind of trading patterns. But I believe that in the future it will be difficult for him to adopt the traditional way of working. That's why even if we are not working and we are not using such kind of instruments, some, such kind of software. I do have in mind that we must start doing it. Yeah, it goes back, to, back to what Ruth was saying before uh, from Freitas, uh, which apparently we have kind of similar mindset apparently. Um, it is, I, I think it is part of the culture that we are bringing to the market and, and the way that we've been doing things in the same way. So uh, back to you and back to what Ruth was saying that we have a change in the demographics and people of younger ages are coming into the market and those ages will be uh, most likely looking to change the way uh, towards a more digital uh, future. And now the next question I have is not for Pandelis, but is uh, for Christos. And um, this is directly linked to what we've been saying just now. And I've, be, I've seen, I've seen um, recently, I don't know whether you've read, there was a, a, a report from Danish Ship Finance uh, Research Department which uh, make some bold statements and predictions in regards to where the market will be in uh, 20 years or 15 years from now. So they were saying that we will have uh, practically a potential scenario would be that there will be zero freight rates and the, more the business model will be different and as a result there will be devaluation of the assets and the assets would be treated in a different way. So a kind of prediction of what they consider the market to kind of that it can become in a few years time. And there was one uh, 
well-known uh, broker in the Greek uh, industry, uh, actually dealing within uh, S&P, uh, that he was saying that, look, I don't get how an algorithm or a system can predict anything. Why would I rely on, a, on, a, on an algorithmic system to predict anything and me believe in what this system is producing? So coming from your technical background, and I don't want technical details on how AI works, but can you give us an indication of what, what an outcome from an AI system means? Is it the uh, most correct thing that you can interpret and how that correct uh, forecast or prediction or uh, model that was developed and the result uh, that it produces can be trusted and how much can it be trusted? Thank you for the question, Oxtadinos. I think I have to rephrase a few things. We are talking for technology, but technology is something that people with technical background loves to do with that. And uh, there are plenty of buzzwords that today bombard us, like artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, uh, data science now a new trend, but at the end, how I can make my life easier every single day. As a company, as Prisma Electronics, we have a deep technical background and uh, we have the privilege over the past year to involve in a prestigious project with uh, CERN in Geneva or with Airbus for space uh, satellites and to know in deep what data acquisition and of course how to use those data uh, can help to take better decisions. Talking for artificial intelligence, it is about how a software or a device can do things in a similar manner with humans. But uh, is it fair enough? Because in our business, we have people with this type of skills or the other type of skills. At the end, it's not about the technology. It's about the applications and about the ability of the people to use this technology in order to do their job in a more efficient, in a better way. So what we always try to tell the people that technology is not challenging our jobs. Technology is challenging our ability to adapt and to do more things using the latest t technology that's available. So it's always every time to decide not only the technology, but how this technology can apply on what we are doing, especially with artificial intelligence, because wrong suggestions drives to wrong decisions. Always it's important, both the human factor, but also the right technology that all can be adapted in the future trends. Okay, thank you. Carlos, you are, you are coming from a kind of different perspective in the market. You are both technical person, but also have a, a solution that is um, that can bring certain benefits. Um, describe to us what you are doing and what you think and how technology in this respect can uh, assist any company dealing within the industry. Thank you. Thank you very much for the question. Uh, as, as you say, I come from a very different uh, environment. Uh, the, the vessel or the boat industry. But um, what I have seen in, in, in the experience that we have, we are an IT program manager company with more than 20 years of experience. And what we have seen is that technology is growing. It takes time to, to put together the technology that you need to cover what is the actual need of the world. As you said, now one kid is playing PlayStation with another kid in the other part of the world, or now you can go to Amazon or Uber just with a click to buy things. So basically our, our proposal is, is uh, to globalize or to give the opportunity globally through a prepaid card or a, a payment method system to, to, to use that technology and to make life simpler for the companies and also the, the employees of the companies. 
So uh, at one point, in a very easy way, with a cell phone, with a click, I can do the payment for all my, my people on the boats, the captains, or even if I have to pay for the food or whatever is needed for the boat. Or also, we, our technology also gives the capacity to a person that works in the boat and, and the families in, in, in Russia, but the boat is in Argentina, he can transfer money uh, instantly, basically, to that person in the other part of the world. So the game is about solving a problem and giving solution to any given problem via technology. It, it is not um, that you want to solve, uh, rather, it's not the technology that, create, uh, that is created just because out of uh, the blue, it is created in order to make things easier and solve a, a given problem. So has this been your experience? Um, and has this been uh, what you've seen in the market when, when you go and say, we, you ha we know that you have a problem, uh, would you be willing to use this technology that we have, this solution that we have to solve this problem? Yeah, yeah actually. The, with all the experience, 20 years of creating this software and this platform that we have today, it, it really helped us to, to give a, or to look the, the big picture of, of the situation, the big picture of the environment that we are trying to, to go into and, and, and see the, the opportunity where it's needed. Not, not only solve a, a big picture situation, but to give a very a specific example, I know that in the boat industry you, you still manage a lot of cash. And it's, to move cash today is, 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 is difficult, it's expensive, uh, security-wise it's complicated. So the technology today, I think, it helps to, to avoid those, those, those issues that in very particular way in the global environment that uh, the vessel industry lives, it can help. It can really, really help. Solution of a problem, Greg. Um, and you're working on a very specific type of solution to a problem, as uh, I say, no at Ecomarine Power. Do you think that the solution that you are offering could be a, a reason for which you might, we might be seeing differentiation in regards to the design of vessels and how? Uh, vessels are utilizing uh, power and which power they are using in order to execute uh, their business? I, I think we've got, in shipping, I think we've got two issues here. So we're, we're working on renewable energy solutions for ships. And our aim is to basically re replace uh, traditional propulsion systems with renewable energy to some extent. I think the problem in shipping, to be quite honest, is on one hand, there's the technology developers like our companies that are using all the state-of-art technology for many, many years. I mean, engineers and scientists are using this technology for many, many years. But then when you get to shipping, there seems to be like a break. There's two speeds here. There's the solutions that we're able to develop, and then there seems to be a lack of willingness, for, for whatever reason, for shipping to take the technologies that we're developing. So I don't know why that is in shipping. It's, it's not necessarily something you would see in telecoms. It's not something you would see in aviation where they, they were basically trying to grab the technology from you before you've even finished development. In shipping, even if you've finished development, even if you have the products ready, there's, all, there's almost like an invisible hand you know, resisting it. Um, and I, to be honest, I think that's the problem that one of the core things we have to address in shipping. Why, why is this underlying resistance to adapting technologies in cases that have been, in some cases, been around for 20 years? So we end up in a situation where you're saying, yes, we have things happening in a given way. This has been the case for many years. Nothing has changed or marginal change, changes happened. We have technology in place. We could be leveraging technology, but uh, for some reason, although there is a value proposition, uh, I presume there is value proposition, so uh, you're saying there's something 
for some reason that we are seeing slow adoption of technology within our industry. So is it, again, I think I go back to, back to the, the issue of, um, is it a cultural thing? We are uh, totally risk averse and we don't want to change what we are doing today irrespective of whether we are getting any value from technology? Is, is this the case? Okay. I'll give you an extreme example. Um, I was trained in automation systems for ships when I was a technician in the 1980s. I could walk onto a ship now and still see that they're not using basic automation systems. I have sat down with a ship manager and explained to them that the noon report and you know, the, the logging of data, everything they're doing can all be automated. And the answer that I got from a ship manager once was basically along the lines of, the crew do as we t tell them, uh, we don't have to invest in this. You know, so this is real, it's, it's a cultural issue and uh, it's just not discussed sometimes openly, but we're, we're here having an open discussion and I'm, I'm telling you that, that that culture in some areas of shipping, not all, exists. And, uh, it's hard to understand. I'll, uh, I'll uh, come to you, Yasimus, in a moment. The question is, and it goes to everyone, is it possible to everyone of us in technology, is it possible that we are not good enough at conveying the message and um, uh, giving the right, uh, the right arguments in order to persuade those persons that they should be doing the change? Is it probably part of our uh, issue as well? Anyone? I think it is uh, a combination of issues. Technologies from by itself cannot solve any problem. So it requires also investment and also uh, resources, people to evolve. Uh, this automatically creates implications or make it difficult and requires planning. And uh, planning, it is something that again cost and also defocus the company from, from the prime objective to earn more money or to secure that the vessels are going. From our perspectives, what we have seen is that yes, there is huge resistance in change, despite sometimes if the top management wants or willing to disrupt the operation or to change the way that the shipping company works. But from the other side, those that are not capable to change, probably they will face severe uh, implications in the future because regulations make everybody to change. Already we are aware 2020, 2023 and the mission trade scheme is coming and uh, of course Paris Treaty goes much more further. Thank you. Um, linked to you now, Intrasoft, you do business in other, in other markets as well. So do you see any analogies with uh, other markets? Are we, are we facing the same issues uh, of uh, transformation from a more manual uh, and not that so very, very sophisticated way of doing things to uh, what, and, and these are the same challenges that are being faced by other uh, industries as well. For example, in, um, asset heavy industries like aviation, uh, is aviation facing the same issues? I don't know whether you deal with aviation. I presume you do. Well, <coughs> aviation, I don't think that's the, 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 the best example here. I, I will tell you an example which may be even worse. It's governments. Governments all over the world resist the digitization. The only reason that governments proceed to digitization is because the citizen is requesting some services out of them, and now they are forced to provide them. Uh, in shipping, I think the, the issue, because not a, it's not a problem, it's a, it's, a, it's a matter of architecture, is that the ship was an isolated uh, factory on the sea, very far from the shore, from the headquarters, which had to overcome the issues of the sea itself. Communication was not abundant. It was a very big problem to communicate for up to now, almost. And so there was a big cultural, local uh, status state on the ship that 
negates whatever efforts we are trying to digitize it, to transform it. And yes, I think we are not very efficient in conveying a good message for what the benefit would be for adapting an automation, for uh, applying data analytics, for uh, deploying a blockchain network. Uh, so uh, now that communication is becoming more and more uh, capable of connecting the ship to shore, now that people are slowly adapting the, the idea of putting sensors on the ship, monitoring its performance, its whereabouts, we are slowly, slowly gathering the data that we can apply artificial intelligence algorithms on it, and then create the new uh, business models, create the new algorithms and trained models in order to give the efficiencies and move to a, net, uh, to a later stage. So I think that the communication um, efficiency that now is happening will change things a lot. And uh, just to make a note on the previous discussion on the artificial intelligence, uh, to my experience, artificial intelligence can predict and even can prescribe the solution. Uh, in uh, finance, we see already solutions like the one that we uh, showcased in early in the morning that predicts the probability that, show, that uh, shows the probability of somebody to default. So somebody to not uh, provide your credit back that you uh, provided. Uh, the same goes to machinery. I know that there are applications that can predict if a pump failed before the time of actual failure that the, the vendor would uh, state. So they are already predicting and they are already prescribing. This does not mean that will replace us. Technology is also a, always a tool, and a tool to make uh, our lives better and to create better margins, to make our jobs more efficient. So um, I've been reading a recent case study uh, issued by Harvard Business uh, School and Accenture. And they were saying that around, uh, they asked uh, a very big uh, number of uh, interviewees and uh, um, the result was that 54% of their time spent during uh, their working hours is purely administrative tasks. I'm sure that you recognize this pattern yourselves from your own uh, uh, professional life. So um, would, it, would it be possible that through the usage of technology, advanced technologies, could we see uh, these kind of changes that uh, administrative tasks, and this goes to a discussion we had with John yesterday, administrative tasks in big volumes are handled by a machine, in inverted commas machine, and the higher level decision making thinking uh, could be happening from uh, persons within uh, the companies. So, uh, John, this is something we discussed yesterday, and uh, Erasmus is, it is linked to the, the technology, advanced technology element as well. Uh, of course, this is a question that uh, anyone uh, could be answering. Yesterday, uh, as you rightly uh, recall, we had this discussion uh, during dinner, and we also discussed about valuations, um, um, which is something, again, which, of course, comes down to my business, uh, to the sale and purchase business, to valuing assets, valuing ships. Um, I, will, I, will, I will give a broad answer on, on uh, yes, machines can give some elements and can provide some elements of our business, but they cannot do the job in the entire way, definitely. Some tasks can be allocated to machines, and then maybe the more sophisticated business can, done, can be done by, by the broker. So yes, it is a tool. It can work in parallel. Uh, it can also work uh, uh, together. So um, on the valuation side, uh, I, I would like to recall the, the conversation we had yesterday, if you don't mind, uh, about problems of an algorithm of a computer valuing a ship. And I think this might be of interest to, to, to ship owners, of course, and, and, and uh, financiers, because the value of a ship is of value to everybody. If we give an honest opinion about what the ship's value is today, definitely we rely on data, which is last done. It is the uh, ships that have been sold, so that's historic data, as close as possible to today. And also we rely on another uh, very important aspect, which is the feeling. It's the market conditions. It's the sentiment 
sentiment. It's a very important word. We rely on the sentiment and we rely very much on how the markets are actually moving. The market can move because we feel it. And we feel the market. The computer can take some of these aspects in the system. It can adapt it, artificial intelligence, you name it, whatever you want to name it, algorithms. But it cannot give the exact opinion that a broker has today. But then again, you might challenge me saying, three brokers might have three different opinions. What happens there? And, and even goes That's again, a good sample. I'll uh, even go a step further. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how many of you know how the digital advertising world uh, functions. You don't do anything. You just say how much impressions you want to buy. And there is an algorithm doing bidding for you so that it gets the optimal pricing for you. So there are different, uh, different algorithms from both sides trading for each of the two. In financial services, as I mentioned, is the same thing. So they are taking into consideration current data so huge loads of data plus the sentiment because there is uh, artificial intelligence that takes into consideration and does sentiment analysis. So there are lots of aspects that are being taken into consideration by an algorithm. I'm not saying that we are going tomorrow towards that direction. I get where you're coming from. Um, so I'm just challenging your, your perception uh, from coming from a, a technical, uh, technical way of thinking a bit more technical way of thinking. Um, but Delit, do you think that you would be allowing any system trading for you in the near future? Uh, five or six years after today, would you have an algorithm doing uh, freight, uh, freight execution on a digital uh, marketplace in an automated way or even partially automated? I do believe that, uh, first of all, there are a lot of traders, maybe you know, uh, especially on the bigger side, that uh, they are using their own platforms and uh, in order to get their cargo, at least uh, a good percentage of these cargoes are going out uh, to the vessel via electronic platforms. I do believe that uh, maybe this uh, revolution, maybe these changes will come earlier than we think. Uh, all depends, of course, of the technology. All depends of um, how easy it will be, how um, accurate it will be for the, user, for the users. Because you see, if something is very difficult, if something is very complicated, and uh, in combination with uh, resistance to change, this will be a, uh, very difficult for somebody to adapt, very difficult for somebody to say, yes, we can do it. But if it's, it will be easy and it will be effective, then yes, uh, I do believe that uh, despite the resistance, which I do have also, I believe that we will see it in the future, and in the near future. You know, um, I don't know how many of you have seen the uh, um, press release by Bungi, ADM, Louis Dreyfus, and Cargill about digitizing their whole post-commodity trade process. The whole process from shipping one uh, position to the other being done with AI and blockchain. So the big players in the market are already doing and going towards that direction. So I'm not, I'm one of those persons that I believe that it will be faster than uh, later. Uh, and it is just up to us to understand and get the, the feeling that we are moving towards that direction, probably a bit earlier than, uh, than what we think. Um, I don't know, should I be wrapping up? Yes. I should. Okay, so I, I don't know, um, would you like to add something? Shall we get a couple of questions from the audience? It's up to you. Yeah, any questions? No questions. Can I just finish with Something that will uh, enlighten everybody. I don't know if everybody knows, but the first computer was actually owned by Adam and Eve. It was an Apple with just a very limited memory. It had one byte and everything crashed. That's, that's part of technology, <laughs> it crashes. Rely on computers only. <laughs>